Hello and welcome to this short video on the role of the Operating Department Practitioner. Operating Department Practitioners, or ODPs for short, are an important part of the Operating Department team. They work alongside anaesthetists, surgeons, theatre nurses and healthcare assistants to ensure every operation is as safe and effective as possible. ODPs provide high standards of patient care and skilled support throughout the perioperative journey. The ODP role is quite diverse, working within the three areas of the perioperative journey. There are some overarching qualities and skills that are necessary for the ODP. These include the ability to communicate effectively and to accurately complete patient documentation. This is essential to ensure the safety of both the patient and the perioperative team. As an ODP, you could be working as an anaesthetic practitioner, assisting the anaesthetist, as a scrub or circulating practitioner, assisting the surgical team, or as a recovery practitioner. Hi hey Craig, I'm Tracy. I'm going to be helping looking after you today in the anaesthetic room. I'm going to do a couple of checks before we take you around to the theatre. Okay. Can you just confirm your name and your date of birth for me, please? Craig Johnston, 14th of the 10th, 1988. Okay, um, have you got any allergies that you know of? Not that I know of. Have you got any pins, plates, or prosthesis? No. No. Okay. As an ODP, often the first time you will meet your patient will be in the theatre reception area. At this point, excellent communication skills are paramount. To enable you to plan the care of the patient, it is important that you very quickly establish a rapport and gather as much information about the patient as you can. It is the role of the ODP to be satisfied that they have got the correct patient and that the patient is aware of what they are coming to theatre for. Once the ODP has completed the patient checklist, they will then continue to the anaesthetic room. It is the role of the ODP to ensure that the environment is safe and adequately prepared to accept the patient. This includes checking medical and surgical equipment, ensuring from an infection control point of view that the environment and equipment is of an acceptable standard. When taking the patient to theatre, it is important to maintain their dignity on the corridors and ensure that they are not too cold. The patient will have previously met the anaesthetist either at pre-op clinic or on the morning of surgery. Once in the anaesthetic room, the ODP will apply monitoring to the patient. It is important to explain what you are doing. The anaesthetist will need assistance in inserting a cannula to the patient and applying a dressing to secure it. Once all the baseline observations have been taken, the anaesthetist will proceed to anaesthetise the patient. The type of anaesthetic delivered will depend on a number of variables including type of surgery and the patient's medical condition. This patient is having a general anaesthetic. This will include the anaesthetist pre-oxygenating the patient prior to administrating the anaesthetic. The anaesthetist will have to place a tube in the patient's trachea. It is the role of the ODP to ensure that the correct tube is selected and that all the equipment necessary to assist effectively is checked and prepared. The ODP will then pass the equipment to the anaesthetist and offer any assistance required. Once the patient is safely anaesthetised, they will then be taken into the operating theatre. The theatre environment will already have been prepared to accept the patient by the practitioner who is undertaking the scrub or circulating role. Once the patient is in theatre, the anaesthetic ODP will ensure that the patient's monitoring has resumed and that they are safely positioned. They will also ensure that the anaesthetist is satisfied that the anaesthetic is continuing as planned. 
The scrub ODP will wash their hands in a methodical manner. This is called scrubbing up. Once the scrub ODP has finished scrubbing up, they will then have to put on a surgical gown and gloves. This is a technique that requires practice. Once the scrub ODP is gowned and gloved, they can then prepare the equipment required by the surgical team. There are numerous types of surgical instruments and these come on trays that have to be organised and counted to ensure that every instrument used is accounted for. The same principle applies to surgical swabs and needles. Ultimately, it is the joint responsibility of the scrub ODP and surgeon to ensure that whatever equipment is used is accounted for. Once the scrub ODP is at the operating table, they are reliant on the rest of the team to provide them with supplementary items that they need. These will include dressings, drains and surgical swabs. These will all be written on a count board for the scrub practitioner to see throughout. Throughout the course of the operation, the ODP will pass instrumentation, swabs and sutures to the surgeon as required. The ODP is responsible for ensuring that all equipment used is accounted for. At the end of the operation, it is vitally important to undertake a formal count for all the instruments, swabs and needles that have been used. Once all accounted for, it is up to the scrub practitioner to inform the operating surgeon that all swabs, needles and instruments are correct. The surgical drapes will be removed, maintaining the patient's dignity at all times. At this point, the anaesthetic ODP will assist the anaesthetist in maintaining the patient's airway and ensure that the patient is receiving adequate oxygen via the appropriate device. The recovery room will have already been prepared in the morning to ensure that all equipment is available and working. This is the area where nearly all patients, regardless of the type of anaesthetic they have had, will go to for the immediate period after their operation. The anaesthetist will hand over the patient into the care of the recovery ODP, giving details of the operation, type of anaesthetic, observations and drugs given interoperatively. Whilst the recovery ODP is receiving the handover, they will be ensuring that the patient's airway is safe and they will also be applying monitoring to the patient. The recovery ODP will need excellent airway management skills. Once the patient is breathing adequately, the recovery ODP will commence documenting their patient's vital signs on their observation chart. These are done on a regular basis until the recovery ODP is satisfied that the patient can be returned to the ward. Prior to the patient leaving recovery, a certain criteria need to be met. Hi Craig, you alright? Yeah. Once this criteria has been met, the ward staff will often come to recovery to accompany their patient back to the ward. The recovery ODP will give a detailed handover to the ward staff. The ward staff will then continue to monitor the patient throughout the rest of their stay.
Throughout the patient's perioperative journey, they will be cared for by a multi-professional team, many of whom will be operating department practitioners. Throughout the patient's episode of care, there are basic principles which will be observed. These will include being treated with respect and honesty, having their dignity maintained and ensuring confidentiality throughout. It is the role of the ODP to ensure that these principles are upheld. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video on the role of the operating department practitioner. I hope that this has given you an insight to the diversity of the role and the personal qualities required of an ODP.